Bill's Kitchen. Today, we're going to be making the all-American mashed potato. Yes, the mashed potato. Made in every diner across this beautiful country. And also, um, the creamy cousin of the meatloaf. Not the singer, the actual meatloaf. They go together really well. So, let's start out by talking about what kind of potatoes we're going to use. Now, there's several potatoes you can use. As a matter of fact, there's probably more than several. Um, <clears throat> what I like to use is the russet, and that's your typical baking potato. And the reason I like the russets is because uh, they tend to be a little larger than, say, like the Yukon Gold. If you buy a bag of Yukon Gold potatoes, which I really love the flavor of the Yukon Golds, but a lot of the potatoes are really small, so you got to peel like 40 of them, you know, to make a decent amount of mashed potato. So that's why I like to go with the russet. And uh, here's a russet right here. This is a very large one. Uh, usually they're more uh, medium sizes, and that's what I have here today, is I have uh, six uh, medium-sized russets uh, peeled, and I, I cut up... Uh, four of them already just to save some time but I'll cut the last two for you and uh, basically it's simple uh, cut first cut the potato in half and when the water's on this it's really sticky <laughs> then I cut it down each one down the size and then just you know Get you some decent sized chunks. Alright, so that's one. Now I have, I peeled these potatoes last night and I put them in extremely cold water. I, I actually add ice to the water to keep it really cold. Because what will happen is if you put these in warm water, they'll tend to start turning brown. And um, brown. Brown mashed potatoes don't look pretty, aren't very appetizing at all. <clears throat> so let's cut this other one. Oh, I'm also going to show you the, the peeler that I bought. cold water. Like I said, I've already got the four in there already chopped up. And so, even though the water's cold, you just put it on, put it on high, and just wait for it to boil. And it'll eventually boil. It'll take a while longer with the cold water, but the potatoes won't be brown. So, you know, it's worth it. Um, so, here's the peeler I bought recently on Amazon. I think they call it a speed peeler. Um, this is fantastic. This, I mean, you can peel a potato so fast, it's amazing. Um, you gotta be careful though, because it's very sharp. It's razor sharp. And so you gotta keep your fingers away while you're using it. And I did nick myself once, so I know that's the case. But I tell you what, as far as, you know, if you've got a bunch of potatoes to peel, and you don't want to be doing it all day long, pick up something like this on Amazon. It's really great. Okay, so we've got our potatoes all ready to go. And they will go onto the burner and probably take, I'm not really sure. Like I said, with the water being really cold, it takes a while. But so what we're going to do is we're going to put these on. And we're going to take a break. And when we come back, those potatoes will be just about ready to take out of the hot water. All right, we're back. And uh, we've been boiling our potatoes. And they're almost to the point where we're ready to dump the water out and get these things mashed up. Um, what I normally do is when I'm getting close to the end of the cooking process, 
I'll take a spoon and dip it down into the potatoes, bring out a couple, and then I'll put my knife in and see how much resistance I get. So you want a little bit of resistance, but you don't want um, you don't want them to be raw, so you want to make sure they're cooked. Um, these are these are ready. These are ready. I'm going to leave them in for another minute, and then we're going to dump them in the sink. Oh, also, uh, we, what I didn't mention was um, I added uh, four or five cloves of peeled garlic into the uh, pot before I started cooking. And as I've mentioned before in some of the other videos, I put garlic in everything. So um, it's in the potatoes too. Uh, if I had a little more time, maybe I would roast the garlic before I put it in. And that's always really nice. Um, but, you know, you will get the garlic flavor from just, you know, these them boiling with the potatoes and then getting mashed in with them. So, okay. So let's try this one more time. Make sure we got some good, oh yeah. Good, good. Now if they go too long in the water, what's gonna happen is they're gonna fall apart and then you can't mash them and they'll just be worthless. And you'll have potato soup. All right, I'll be right back. shut this off and when this cools off just a little bit I'm going to put the potatoes back on the heat because there's still a little water left in here so what I'll do is I'll burn up that moisture I'll, I'll steam it out of there and, and it's not going to hurt if there is a little water in there either okay so now what we're going to do is add two cups of whole milk. All right. And we're going to add a stick of butter, which I've already pre-cut up. So you just take the pieces and move them around. I did uh, put salt in the water too with the potatoes when I cooked them. But you're going to have to add salt too. This is salt and butter. So as the old saying goes, you know, you can, um, if you add too much salt, you know, you can't take it out. So, you know, just be careful with that. Knowing that you got the salt and butter, what I usually do is put a little bit of salt in. And then uh, after I whip them up, I'll taste them again with a spoon and see if they need more salt. Uh, I'm going to put a little pepper in. I like pepper and okay so now here's something that most people don't normally do but after I put the two cups of milk and I put the butter in what I do is I put the cover back on and I turn the heat down low and I'll give it a couple minutes to like melt together and uh, and it'll, um, you know, it'll give it more flavor that way, I think. So, I'll turn it up just a little bit more. So here's another thing. If you want, after you mash your potatoes, you could add cheese in. Um, you could add cream cheese in. Uh, you can add um, onions. Um, there's just so many things that you can do to change the flavor of the potatoes. And uh, if you just like straight up mashed potatoes, then that's great. And, uh, and I think that really uh, in and of itself is just a treat. And it goes with everything. Um, meatloaf, chicken, I mean, you name it, pork chops, anything you make. I mean, besides pasta maybe. 
You know, potatoes go, mashed potatoes go wonderful with them. So let me let this sit for a little bit and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. All right, so we've been on low and all that milk and butter have been melting in with the potatoes and the garlic. And now what I'm gonna do, and I'll explain to you why, is I'm gonna pour off all the milk and butter, almost all of it, not all of it. And then what I'll do is get out an old hand masher to start the process of mashing the potatoes. Now, the reason I take a large quantity of the liquids out is because I want to control the texture of my mashed potatoes. And the way I do that is I pour in a little bit at a time as I'm mixing it. And so if I want it super creamy, maybe one day I want it super creamy. You know, I just maybe add all that back in. And then if I don't want super creamy, I just add partially. And so you, you control it that way. And you don't end up with what's ever in here, you know, and it might not be the consistency that you want. So doing the hand mashing, now, hand mashing could be fine. I, for some people, they like lumpy mashed potatoes, and that's great. I mean, you can, you know, mash them nicely here with this masher, and, you know, they could be wonderful. I mean, no problems whatsoever. I like mine smooth. Okay, and the way I get them smooth is I whip them, and uh, I've got this little hand mixer that you know a lot of people use for baking cakes and things like that, and, but it works great for mashed potatoes. And I also have uh, a KitchenAid, and I can put a whisk on that and do it, but not everybody has a KitchenAid, so that's why I'm showing you this way. Most people, I would imagine, do have like a hand mixer at home. And if not, like I said, doing it with the uh, tool, with the uh, mashing tool is fine too. And you can get them pretty smooth. All right, so I've got as far as I can go with this right now. So now the process, I start adding in some of the milk and butter. And we're going to hit it with the machine. And uh, being it's in a pot, you don't have to worry about breaking anything. Like if this was a, me me you know, a glass bowl, you know, you'd have to be concerned. But while it's in the pot, you just hit along the sides. And then, if you can't get everything, you just take a spatula like this and just, you know, put down the sides, get everything mixed back in. Okay, so. I'm getting creamy, but it's not as creamy as I like it, so I'm going to add some more in. A little bit at a time. Alright, now they're starting to really get the wish. Well, like I said, at this point, you could add in cheese. Um, Anything you want. The flavor. Now another thing we need to do right now is taste. Alright, so I need a little salt. So 
now, can you see that? Okay. So look at that. I mean, they're beautiful. And I mean, they're just as smooth as they could possibly be. At this juncture, I would just stop and look, you know. So I've got a little extra liquid left, but that's no big deal. I've got the consistency I want, and uh, it's just as smooth as silk. Now you can, if you're going to have company, you can put these in a bowl, a microwavable bowl, and, you know, just put them off to the side, cover them with foil, and then when your guests come, you throw it in the microwave, you hit it, you know, you warm it up, and uh, just like new. I mean, just like they're freshly out of the, out of the pot. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed being back with you. It's been a while. So, uh, please subscribe, and uh, we'll be seeing you again soon.